Ecke gut verteidigt von Joe Buck, aber da passt oh. Mike. Ja, dann Mike. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for checking in. I'm Coach Robinson from WPI. This is Dose of Hoops, Episode 7, Overseas Edition. I sat down with AJ Rudowitz, a good friend of mine who played professionally in Germany for four years. And the reason we're doing this is just to give people a deeper look into playing professionally overseas. Uh, it varies so much depending on what country you play in, what league you play in. But uh, I think there's some pretty cool stories to tell and we want to dive into the intricacies of, of navigating a pro career. Uh, I want to start with AJ because I think his experience is just so unique. as he and his team grew through the, through the German basketball ranks. And what's really cool about AJ is uh, what he did after his pro career. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, AJ played at Division II Stonehill College under Coach Dave McLaughlin, was a thousand point scorer, went to two NCAA tournaments, uh, two time all any 10 player, all district, uh, started his pro career in Germany in the Regionalliga, which is the fourth league. Um, and signed a new contract in the Pro B, where his team then moved up to the Pro A, and then moved up again uh, to the Bundesliga, which is the top um, top league in Germany. So a really cool experience there, and we we talk we talk through that process and how that happens. Um, and it's just rare to experience so much in so little time. Uh, we talk about dealing with agents, um, culture, learning a new language, player coach relationships. You know, the struggles of being away from home for 10 months out of the year and, and winning championships and being a part of a really successful program. Um, so AJ played four years in Germany, then went back uh, to Temple Law School, passed the bar, and he's currently in his third year at Dwayne Morris uh, in Philadelphia. And one thing AJ and I discuss is, you know, it's never too late to, to pursue your goals and to pursue your dreams. And, and he's a great example of that, uh, where he was able to, you know, go play professionally in Germany and then come back um, and get it done in the classroom as well and pursue pursue that dream of, of being a lawyer as well. So, uh, you know, really special conversation, one I really enjoyed and, and I'm excited to share with you. So without further ado, AJ, appreciate it, my man. Thanks for jumping on here with me today. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. We'll, we'll start taking it way back to Stonehill, when you're in college, what what are you thinking? What's your what's your mindset in terms of like going to get a job at a school or or going to pursue you know a professional career overseas? Obviously, as you started to see you know a lot of success during your time there, and you got a little bit older, I'm sure those opportunities opened up for you. Yeah, so I always knew that like eventually I wanted to go to law school. But I also always had in the back of my mind ever since probably like sophomore, junior year, um, when I started getting, you know, the awards and honors, like all conference and stuff like that. I was like, you know, what, maybe maybe I have a realistic shot of uh, going overseas and playing at a high level. And then my senior year um, had a great year team wise, also had a great year individually. And, and um, I got to play in like the All-American game, the Division Two All-American game, which super cool. It was uh, at the Basketball Hall of Fame and a lot of agents there uh, watching the game, playing against, you know, everybody from throughout the country, top top players from throughout the country in D2. And at that, that was like the moment where I was like, you know what, I can definitely play at a high level overseas and, you know, just talk with my dad and my coach. And they're like, yeah, you, I, I think you should go ahead and do it. I mean, it's because it's, it's a nervous decision, right? Like to, to right. move a halfway across the world um you don't you don't know anybody you don't speak the language it's it's like a nervous proposition yeah. but luckily like I, I had people pushing me to do it now, thinking back now luckily I had that right yeah like, uh, absolutely so um I kind of just made this decision you know at least I'll give it a shot at least I'll give it a year mm -hmm. um that's when a after the all-american game I started talking to my coach and he put me in contact with a couple of people who were agents and who helped out agencies. And I mean, that, 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 that process is a little scary too. I mean, you're, you're 21 years old, right? Uh, you're just, you're still in college and you're trying to navigate this, 
this avenue to go overseas and to try to figure out who can help you to go overseas, who, mm -hmm. who, who really wants to help you and who's just looking to make a quick buck. Right. Right. <laughs> because, uh, there, there's certainly people out there like that. Um, yeah. so what, what I kind of did was I, I just talked to everybody that I could. I talked to of agents or scouts for overseas. I would call everybody. Um, and it's a little, as a 21 year old, just trying to cold call people. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what helped me out a ton, like with getting to know exactly like how, how am I going to get over there? Do I want to definitely get over there? Um, and so it, it helped me develop some contacts with the European basketball leagues because the agents over there, they don't, they typically don't just specialize in one country. Like they'll, yeah. they're yeah. a European agent, right? They're not like a German agent or a Spanish league agent. They're typically right. just They're well connected over there. Yeah. Exactly. So then I started talking to a few different agents from, from over there. And eventually I started talking with an agent from Germany. Uh, his name was actually German. Kind of, like that was his name, German. Um, a little bit strange. But <laughs> so he, he, he like, he demonstrated to me that he had a ton of contacts and he was showing me like a list of all different players that he has. And especially like new players coming out there getting your foot in the door because that's what's most important when you're getting over there, just getting your foot in the door, getting that first contract. Um, and he was, he was able to show me all these players who he's been able to do the same thing for. So once I saw that he had all these players who, I mean, you, you can look them up, right. They're not just made up names. You can look up that they were playing college basketball and now they're playing in, in Europe. So I was like, all right, th this seems like a good fit that this guy is able to place people yeah. in their first year real situation exactly so i signed i signed with um his agency um and and t typically what you can do with these agents the first for your first year is uh you can tell these guys like hey listen i don't know if i just want to sign directly with you right away right but if, but if you can bring me some options like and they're good options then sure i'll, I'll hop on board um and that's kind of what I did. He brought some, some offers to me and I was like, okay, this guy's the real deal. And I signed it. I'll just, I'll dive into like kind of how, like the offers that he was presenting me with, which yeah. were, yeah. one of them was in Morocco. Uh, I think one was in France and then there was one in Germany. Uh, Morocco paid the best, like by far, paid a lot, but not not the greatest destination from your it's perspective. not really yeah it's not really <laughs> want to be playing so i, I talked with some people who were over there and they were like listen man that's it's good money but you got to realize like there's a good chance they might not even pay you like they might bring you there and just string you along and you right. might get 25 percent of that and the french the french league was an okay league not really great and then people that i was talking to and i was doing a ton of research I, f I figured out that like German basketball was probably top to bottom, like the best leagues in Europe. And they were consistent. Like they will pay you. They're good for their, mo they're good for your mo their money. And they're like, uh, they'll, they'll help you develop as a player. So that, that, that's the route I went. I decided to take the contract in Germany. Um, it was in a, in a league called the Regionalliga, which is, it's, it's a lower league in Germany. Um, yeah. It, it was it was a good way to get my foot in the door. It's tough to get over there, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially coming from D two D three, there's there's definitely possibilities, but you got you want to pick the right one, right? Because there's I mean there's you know fortunately you didn't have to go through tryouts and things like that over here in the states. You see a lot of you know just last summer I remember getting on a plane um, to go out to California recruiting and you know a couple guys from our league, a couple D two guys from the area. You know, I saw hopping on a flight and I was talking to them a little bit and they're like, yeah, we're going out to Vegas for, uh, you know, tryouts just to, yeah. to get some, some scouts from overseas to take a look and, and see if we can get an opportunity out there. So you end up, you know, it is as difficult as a process as it probably is just dealing with agents who are trying to figure out who you can trust and you end up finding a good spot in, in a, you know, a place that, you know, a lot of us know is, is a is a pretty solid destination. So you get over there and, and, you know, what's it like getting situated out there? Um, just in terms of like, 
trying to find an apartment, trying to, you know, connect with your teammates, figure out this whole, this whole new schedule. Yeah. So again, it varies by league for sure. And uh, luckily I've, I've had a lot of different experiences in the different leagues. So I, I, I can, I can tell you that it varies quite a bit, but my, my first year, so I first get out there pretty much every, every team when, when you're getting into contract with them, they'll, they'll tell you straight up like, Hey, your housing, your apartment, we, we will take care of that. And then they will, especially in the, in the, the legit league countries, they'll, they'll hook you up with an apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my team did. They'll make sure you got transportation, whether that be a car um, or if you're like in a very metropolitan city that has good um, public transportation, they'll get you like all the different kind of passes that you need. For right. Public transportation. Yeah. I, I live downtown, so I really didn't need a car and otherwise like just have the public transportation. So I get there. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a crazy experience the first few months of it. Like, and it's especially in, in my league, you, you're only allowed to have two Americans on a team at once uh, in that first league and only one American on the court. My, my team only had one American, it was me. So you move in, you start going to practice, and I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all Germans at that point. But luckily, everybody speaks English, right? So, and yeah. they're, they're all pumped to meet you. Everybody's excited to meet you and to take you out to – yeah. Everyone's super nice over there. They're like, oh, like they're gonna go bring bring me this restaurant, bring me that bar, like, oh, we're gonna go to this club later. Like it's it's such a cool experience, but at the same time, um it's it's super strange because they only play one game a week typically, and usually that's the Saturday. So the rest of the days are practice. Um, and in that first league I was in, you had one practice a day. So it'd be like somewhere around, let's say like six or seven o'clock because a lot of these other guys had full-time jobs. Right, right. Work and then go to practice. So during the day, it's like, what, what, what the hell do I do all day? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't speak German. So, but you, you just kind of, you got to just kind of embrace it. I mean, I, I would go out uh, into the city and at first, like the first couple months, I'd just be like, going to different stores, the different bakeries, but I couldn't speak. So when I want something, I would just like point at it. Like, I definitely just looked like such an idiot, but um, <laughs> you, you kind of just got to, you got, if you're going to be out there, you got to put yourself in these situations. Luckily for me, like I, I talked to my, my coach. Um, first of all, I had two great, great coaches that first year. Um, Alex Hyperink and Wolfgang. And I had some great teammates, like my buddy, Nick Coltai over there took care of me. Like, the whole time um and they the team paid for me to go get german lessons so That's during cool. the day my yeah it was, it was and it was super useful like so yeah. my, my day would really consist of wake up make a good breakfast because i you know you got to be professional you got to take care of your body so make a good breakfast go to the uh to the gym to work out like to lift i'd lift for a couple hours um i'd walk home around one I go to my classes and the German classes that I had are like, it's for immigrants because in Germany you have to learn German to become a resident or become a citizen. So I was in like the classes with people from Italy, from Iran, from Afghanistan, from different countries in Africa. It was, it was such a surreal experience. Like I'm sitting right next to this guy from Iran, um, and meanwhile, this is like back in a time like nine years ago, right? Where like Iran US tensions were like pretty high. But me and this guy became like pretty cool friends. Like he was super, super cool guy, like big basketball fan. He'd come to my games and stuff. Uh, so it, it was cool to just meet people from all over the world. Right. So I, I was able to learn uh, through those classes. Um, but a after class, I'd go home i'd have a big lunch and then i'd go to practice for a couple hours i'd stay i'd just get extra shots up extra moves in um because i i had the time right like i, I had all the time in the world at that point and right. I'll, I'll tell you what else like the time difference so six hours so i mean if you're trying to talk to people from back home and they're not getting out of work till six that's midnight here so I, my my schedules i really 
I'd really go to bed at like three or four in the morning most times. Yeah. And then I'd wake up at like, you know, 10 o'clock. So it, it's, it's a bit of a different, um, different animal when it comes to your sleep cycle. Though. What's it like in terms of the dynamic on a team in a yeah. league like that where, you know, is it a situation where it's a little bit of like competitiveness within the team? Guys got to make sure they produce so that they can elevate themselves. Or at that level, is it more guys who maybe have an understanding of, look at, I love basketball, so I'm going to keep playing, but I've got, I've got a career, you know? It's the latter. Yeah. It's the latter. It, it's mostly, um, as far as the German nationals go, I'd say 90% are, hey, like, either I used to play at a really high level and now, you know, I've got a different career or, um, you know, I have a career and I just love playing basketball. Sometimes there's some younger guys, like you'll get like the 17, 18 year olds, they got some talent yeah. uh, that might want to go play uh, college basketball yeah. in the States. So there's really not much competition within the team, but on the other teams, you got the other Americans, usually two on a team who they are, um, everybody's fighting tooth and nail to make it to that next level. Right. right. So, so it's always American, you're American versus American, like over there in that, in that league, in that specific. You guys had a pretty successful year that one year in that league. Okay. We, we won it. We won it all. Um, they, they didn't have playoffs in that league. I think it was just regular season. Gotcha. Um, but we ended up on top. But yeah. We, we, we just had a lot of fun that, that year was so much fun. Like just being over there, your first year over there, it's so different. Right. And, and to me, I mean, it was 10 years ago now. Yeah. It was like so long ago, but uh, it was, it was a super, super fun year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traded that year for anything. And the people that I've met there also, I'm, I'm still friends with these people today. Like yeah. uh, my, my one coach, Alex, he comes, he comes out to Philly sometimes uh, and he'll stay with us or my, my buddy, Nick, he'll be, he'll, uh, both Alex and Nick will be coming to the wedding. And Nick, I went to his wedding, uh, like last year and I stayed with Alex, stayed with Nick. Like it was just, it was, uh, it was a really good experience. After that, I was like, all right, like my, my whole goal was let, let's, let's move up. Like let's yeah. move up. Um, the team that I was on had the opportunity to move up because we won the league, but, uh, it's, it's not always in the team's best interest to do so like financially, right? Like yeah. it's, it costs a lot more money to move up in different leagues. So we, our team wasn't going to do that. Um, and I, I decided at that point that I would represent myself. Um, I wouldn't hire an agent. I would just represent myself because the agents in Europe, they make 10% of the player's salary. So you know, let's simple math. If if the player is getting paid a hundred thousand dollars for the season, the agent's getting paid ten thousand dollars. Now the team pays that, right? The team pays the ten thousand dollars, but you've got to imagine that the team factors that into it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. what I did was I, you know, because I had a really good year and I had some contacts, I I had uh one of my teammates there, Andreas Hornig, who played in the higher levels before he was like, listen, man, you got to play in these higher levels. Like you need to play there. Like I'm putting you in contact with my old coach, Pat Elzey and uh, for Rat Rastafecta, go, give, give him a call. So I gave, I gave coach Pat a call. Um, and I told him, I was like, listen, Pat, like I am, I'm representing myself. I don't have an agent. I'd just like to deal with you, you know, what one-to-one, like yeah. you don't need a little man here. And we started, you know, negotiating salary. He was in, in the higher league than I was. Um, and then when we were in salary, I was like, listen, Pat, like, you know, you know, you guys don't have to pay the agent the 10%. Like, so why don't you give me some of that? And you know what? They're like, yeah, sure. Like they're still saving 3%. Right. So it makes sense for them. Uh, so that, that's kind of how I did. I didn't even really talk to any other teams. I just, I, I took my teammates advice. He's like, listen, this coach is awesome. He's great. And this town is a great basketball town. So you definitely want to go there and play there. So I just took his advice and just went to this team called Rasta Effective. You get there and, and just talk a little bit about like the, um, the leagues and, you know, how it works over there in terms of like, um, you know, yep. first league, second league, third league, fourth league. Sure. So 
the first league there, it's called Bundesliga, top league. Um, and it's the same name as the, the German soccer league. It's the, the soccer Bundesliga, the football Bundesliga. So the basketball Bundesliga. Then there's um, two leagues below that, the Pro A and the Pro B. They used to just be one league, and then they got separated into two. So it's the Pro A, Pro B, and then the Regionalliga, where, where I started. Yeah. So in, in Europe, for any soccer fans out there, they might know this, but in the leagues there, they have promotion and relegation. So if a team in the Pro A, which is right below the Bundesliga, comes in the top two, it can be promoted, if it wants to, up into the Bundesliga. And the two teams in the Bundesliga that are in the bottom two, they would get relegated to the Pro A. So, you know, there'd be no uh, no trust the process over there. That really wouldn't work, you know. No, 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 no Sixers tanking. You just keep dropping down, <laughs> dropping down these. So that's an automatic drop if you finish in the bottom two. Automatic drop so long as one of the other – one of the two teams that came in top – that came in the top two below it yeah. want to move up. Yeah. To replace them. Gotcha. So that, that, that's kind of how it works. Um, that's the structure there. And there, there is a big difference between the leagues, right? Like I said before that you in the regionality, you could have two Americans on team, one on the court. In the Pro B, I'm hoping I don't get this wrong. I think you can have two Americans on the court and maybe one international. Yeah. And then you have two Germans. But you can have as many Americans on the team. In the Pro A, you can have three Americans on the court, I believe. And um, on, in the Bundesliga, you can have as many Americans on the court as you want. So that, that, that's a, a big difference. What's the, what's the travel like? Um, and how's that different between those leagues? Like if you're, so, so you're in Pro A, are you playing in the same cities throughout the country as you would be in, in the Pro B? Or, or is it like more expansive? Yeah, so Pro A, Pro B, Bundesliga, they're pretty much, you're playing throughout, um, throughout the country. Uh, the the Regionalliga is a little bit different. The Regionalliga, it stands for like regional, re regional league. So, you know, you got the Southwestern, Southeastern, Northeastern, Northwestern. So in that, in that league, you're really just playing in that, in that region. And then what's the, um, from the Bundesliga, how do you get from there now? What's the what's the separator between like uh, the Euro Cup and like you know Euro League? So the team that uh, I used to play for in in the Bundesliga, Rostovka, they are in um, I believe the Euro Cup right now. So in order to do that, there's there's certain requirements, and there's the Euro League and the Euro Cup, and there's different requirements for these teams to make it in in there. And I I could be a little bit off here, um, but I believe one of the ways to get in is if you come in the top two in your league, then you can get into there. And then there's another way where there's like this, if you're a top four or top six midway through the season, you play in this like mid-season tournament. And that's what will get you into like the Euro Cup, for example, mm -hmm. something like that. So you need to be a top team in the Bundesliga to get into the Euro League or the Euro Cup. I'm almost positive Rost is in there. I don't wanna I don't wanna butcher that. In case, <laughs> in case any Rasta fans are, are gonna put this on. I don't want to mess that up, but I think they are. I think they are. I'm I, I'm always rooting for them. Actually I I just want a little bit of money on them the other day because they're now on DraftKings. So <laughs> nice. That's the quarantine right there. That's what that'll That's it. Be. That's it. <laughs> Everybody's in the stock market and DraftKings now. <laughs> yeah, the um, so so now in the Pro B, right? What's uh, talk talk about that year a little bit, just kind of how how what your experience was in, in the Pro B. And one thing I think is interesting is uh, the dynamic between players and the coach, um, you know, in some of these leagues. Yeah. Um, so I, I got there, uh, I got nothing but good things to say about Rasta. Um, such a cool, such a cool team, such cool ownership, um, such a cool city. I mean, 
that's the, that city I wasn't prepared to go up there that is a basketball city like mm. so the, the city doesn't have a soccer team up there right um, they just love basketball like, they will pack the stands up and be super loud the whole but as far as like my experience there in the pro B goes uh, we when I got up there we were still playing in like a smaller smaller gym um, but we we had an awesome team um, and the the coach there we had a great coach Pat Elsey and it's a little bit different over there there's some teams and some coaches that are super strict right like they, they run a really tight tight ship especially a lot of these like eastern european uh, coaches are very very tight ship and it's like a traditional college scene right where you got the coach here and the players the players here right yeah luckily my coach, Pat Elsey, he's, uh, he's an American. He's an expat. He lives in Germany now. He, he played overseas in Germany and stayed there. He was, he, I mean, he commanded everybody's respect. We all had the most respect for him, but he was also like a player's coach, right? Like he knew how to relate to the players. He knew how to get the players to like play for him, you know, right. now, and to play for each other. So it was a, it was a super cool dynamic in that way that like, um we could all laugh together we'd all have some beers together right like coach and players included like you don't see that in college or right? you can't do that in college like just go out and have beers with your coach um but they're like you could i mean and and honestly that brought us together like after a big win we'd go out to the bar and like have beers as, as a team as players coach and management like yep. it, it brought everybody together. It was a, it was a super cool. And I, I don't know. If, over there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was unique, but it could, it could have, I mean, you were also talking about Germany, right? Like everybody drinking beers there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was a great, great time of pro B. The competition was definitely um, a big step up to win the championship that year. We had to go through this team Hanover. And they, they, they kicked their ass in the regular season, but we all, I mean, we, we had a really good squad. We had a really good squad. And um, in the, in the championship and the playoffs we played in the championship to move up. And I think we were down. Actually, I think we might've been tied, right? One, I think we were like tied two, two best of five series. We're playing at their place and it's, we're down by, we're down by three. Other teams on the free throw line with like three seconds left, missed the free throw. We come down, I catch the ball, hit a buzzer beater three to send it to overtime. And then we beat them, we beat them in overtime. And it was like, it was the craziest thing, man. Like it was such a cool experience, such a cool experience. And, and we were playing at their place and we had so many fans like traveling uh, to, to Hanover to watch the game. It was, uh, it was a really cool, cool time. Yeah, I think it's I thought I thought it was really neat when I, you know, when I've popped on some of the and you watch like some of the big um like Euroleague games um and you don't get to see as much of like the intimate like environments and yeah. I just thought it was it's great watching some of your games in in those leagues where the fans are awesome. There's like a great camaraderie between the fans and the players oh, like yeah seems like you know after the games you're connecting with the kids and connecting with the fans Big and the time. environment in there and like with the drums and all that it, it was I thought it was the coolest thing it was cool and I'll tell you what else was cool was like we so we used to the players we used to coach the elementary school kids like twice a week in basketball um so like I have my own school I'd go there and be coaching them and like my, my kids would always be coming to the games like and I always be looking for them at the game like it was it was cool yeah, they, they, they'd be teaching me German. I'd be teaching them English. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. They think you're like the next Dirk. I know. <laughs> I know, man. With this hair, I know the difference. <laughs> so, so you guys, you guys win it that first year. So you win a championship your first year. You win a championship your second gotcha. year, and then you guys move up to the pro A. Is that correct? That's correct. So th this team, Rasta, th their goal was always to move all the way up to the Bundesliga. Like, that was the goal. Um, so we we won the Pro B, moved up to the Pro A, um, and we, we got some new players on the team. 
the, the team that we beat uh, Hanover, we actually took their, their two best players, um, Richie Williams out of San Diego State, awesome point guard, and uh, J- Jacob Dirksen, who's, you know, one of my best friends from over there. Uh, and, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout-out to one of my other best friends, Bill Gerke from, from the Pro-B. What's up, Bill? <laughs> Um, and so we, we go to the pro a again, another step up, like in talent again, I mean, yeah. it's the talent over there is really, really great. And like the, com- the competition is awesome. So we're in the pro a and we were, th- this is like when we start, um, like I, the, my, my, my days have changed now. Remember from the rigging out you like, what the hell am I going to do all day? Yeah. Now it's like wake up we, we got we got team weights after team weights we got team shooting then we all go have a team lunch then we come back we do like film then we'll go have like another meal then we'll go have like team practice you know like it, it is like four four types of practices a day um you know it, it takes up your whole day every day it, it's very regimented and everybody's everybody at this level is everybody's a pro basketball player everybody's a pro nobody's doing anything else really everybody's just a pro um right it's it's like on 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 a very another level at that point Um, how many americans you have on this eight on this uh pro a team now at this point i say maybe seven seven out of twelve i think i I, want to say and and so i think you have three on the court one time Maybe four. I'm not sure, but he, I mean, our Germans were awesome too. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, we, we sometimes we play with like three Germans or four Germans on the court at the time because they they were super talented. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I noticed too, you know, you're playing at Stonehill and you're uh, tremendously skilled, like back to the basket post player, and that expanded throughout your career, but you know, how, you, you get over to Europe and it's like, wh- what was the biggest transition that you had to make, like, with your game in order to, you know, be as successful as you, as you could over there? Yeah, good point. Uh, I mean, once once I got to the Pro B, my, my coach was like, all right, if we're going to, if, if we are and you are going to make it to the Bundesliga, like, you got to start transitioning away from being a four to being, like, a three or a two. Mm. So I started working – really hard on my handle on my outside shot. And, you know, I, I became like a, a four slash three when I was playing at the pro B level. And it took, took a lot of work. I mean, my, my whole life, I was more back to the basket, maybe may free throw line extended. Yep. Work the elbows. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that. Like that's so much fun. You know, there's, there's nothing more fun on a basketball court than just getting somebody down low and like, just totally, <laughs> yeah, doing whatever you want, like down there. Yeah. And so I started like moving outside more. And then at the pro a, like, because the size, like it just changes, right? Like the big men are now seven, one, seven, two, the, the fours are now six, nine, six, 10, the threes are now six, seven. And the twos yeah. are like four. So I'm about six, 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 seven. Um, so I really, really had to just turn into a three. I don't think I played, the four or the five maybe I would defend the four or the five if they had a really good four or five I would defend them yep in the pro pro a or in the Bundesliga but on offense I mean I was mainly mainly the three and I I actually played backup point guard believe it or not like there were some games where I had to play point guard for most of the game because uh if Richie had an injury or something which was crazy I mean coming out of Stonehill where I'm just straight back to the basket to now play point guard right again like you know division one point guards who yeah. are now playing professionally overseas i mean it was just a ton of work like on ball handling drills every day like just ball handling ball handling um and i mean it, it's helpful being like taller right because i could see over see over the defense right right yeah i i think too like when i watch i mean when i watch some of those games like it's interesting it's you know, there's so many skilled players, but to really make it and be successful over there, it seems like your competitive nature has to be like way up here to go over there and just kind of grind your way and, and 
you know, be a part of successful teams, like you've got to be super competitive. No doubt. You have to be such a competitor over there. I mean, the guys that I was playing with, man, super competitive. These are the guys you're playing against every day in practice, right? Like you got to beat them out every day in practice, right. kick their ass because they're, they're going to bring it every single day. So, I mean, there, there are no days off over there because everybody's grinding. Everybody's trying to make it to the top. Every, everybody's trying to make big money. So you've got to bring it every day. And that just makes you so much better. And you'll, you'll see, like, if you don't have that competitive drive, like super, super high, you're either probably not going to make it to a high level or you might just decide, you know, maybe it's not for me. And that's fine. Like, right. Like, no big deal. That's just right. the, the people you'll find over there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so in, in the pro way, we start that league and we start 0-3 and, and we get our asses kicked. I think the third game we lost by like 40 points. This team get, uh, get, gets a game. And we're like, damn, like the, the team management is like, damn, like did we just put together a terrible team? Like <laughs> we, we just moved into the pro A paying a lot of money and we went to pro A. Are we just going to – lose every game and come back down. And we never lost confidence. Uh, I'll never forget, like, R Richie Williams, the point guard from San Diego State, after that third game, I remember coaches – well, one of the assistant coaches was saying something like, oh, you know, we just got to try to grind and maybe, like, get some scrappy wins. And he's just like, listen, hell no, man. Like, we are a super talented team. We are not scrapping for anything. Like, we are going to figure this out. We're going to dominate the league. And I'll tell you what, sure enough – we dominated that league. Like, we – I don't know what happened. We just flipped the switch. I think it just took maybe some time for us to get our feet wet in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually, I mean, I, I think our fifth or sixth game, we were down by 28 points again. We are like, oh, no. It's like the third quarter, and we, we came back and won that game. And after that, I think we might have won like 16, 17 games in a row. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a grind, too. You in, in, To circle back, so, like – you're playing one game a week, which is just, I mean, for, you know, for us in the game of college basketball, like, you know, once you get rolling after the preseason, you play your two games a week, it kind of moves. Tuesday, Saturday, right? Tuesday, Saturday. Yeah, but we all know, I mean, two, Nobody three wants to practice in a row. Nobody like, wants to practice every day. I'd much rather have the games. <laughs> it is a grind, no doubt. That's a grind. That's it is. Sure. And I'll tell you what else, like, people don't think about is that the pressure that's on you when you get yeah. to these uh, levels. Like, if you're not producing, they'll send you home. They'll right. send you right home. No, no qualms about it. They'll send you home. I've, uh, most of the teams have been guys just sent home, like, m multiple, multiple people a year just sent home because they're not producing. Yeah. And so and that, that, pressure, stay... that pressure is on you all the time. And then on top of that, you got to stay healthy. You got to stay healthy. You got to stay healthy if you get hurt. Nobody's paying your, your contract. You it's got no use for you. You're hurt. No use for you. Right. So there, is a, there is a lot of pressure. And, you know, it's, it's easy to, for, for me to forget about that. Um, yeah. But I remember, like, you know, if I had some bad games, I mean, even though I had a great career over there, it, it's always in the back of your mind. Like, oh, yeah. God, you know, send me home. <laughs> How about – so you guys are flowing now in the pro A, and you really you, – you kind of put it together, figured it out, bounce back, start winning some games. What's the style of play like? You know, are you, you in to out? Are you, are you playing like five out? Like, how's that? I know you guys had some serious size, if I remember. We did have some serious size. Uh, we, we like to get it inside a lot. Our goal was to get it in. I mean, think about it. If, I, if I'm playing the three and, and I have yeah. a really good points and I have a really good post game, that means we got three guys on the court who can post up at any time. Right. So our game was really let, let's dump it in, let's beat people up, right? Let's get offensive boards, let's beat them up. And then it helped that we had the best shooter I've ever seen, yeah. uh, Corey Hassan, yeah. who could come off the bench and just oh. get hot real quick. Like seven or eight threes, boom, like it's a wrap. So that, that's yeah. – we, we pushed the ball really, really fast. We were very much a run-and-gun team. Yeah. Uh, but if we – when we got slowed down into half-court offense, it was let, let's, let's get it inside. Because, I mean, we, we've talked about it. I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a big proponent of inside out, inside out. Even for three-point shooters, you should want to be inside out because the best place to catch the ball from is coming from the post. It's, it's the most natural three-point shot you can get. 
Yeah. So important, though, to have the shooting, like to have Corey out there on that with that group, because you watch it from from my perspective. And so you got the super talented, strong, dynamic point guard. You got the knockdown shooter. And then say you're at the three, you can extend, drive it from the outside. Oh, yeah. Threes. And then you got Jake, 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 right? Number yeah. five. Right. And then you'd come yeah, in. You, 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 you met him. We, we had some beast. Yeah. So. And he was, man, he, I mean, it's funny. You look at you out there on the court with, with him and, and, and big the Dirk. Man. Big Dirk. Oh. I mean, yeah, we had like, a big time. No. You, don't, you don't look like a big guy out there. <laughs> I know. I know. I look like a guard. <laughs> it's, crazy. it's crazy. It was, it was fun basketball, man. And we just played really, really well together. Nobody was selfish. No yeah. selfishness on that team. Nobody cared who scored. Everybody was pumped for everybody. Like, who's that? If somebody's coming in, like, you know, sub you out and that guy comes in and nails three threes, like you are pumped. It was, it was a really, really, the, the best team I've ever been a part of without yeah. a doubt, without a doubt. And it's funny, you, you, like you could bring Corey off the bench or come in and bang three threes in a row. All of a sudden it changes the whole game. So it is. It's, you know? he, could, he could end the game like that. Or if we're down, he changes the game, just momentum changer like that. Right. If you can be that, because Corey, I mean, he could have started on a lot of teams, right? Like, yeah. He came. He was the sixth man. Um, he could have. He could have started on our team. Like he could have started any team. He's a great player, and he would. It was just like it was almost strategic to have him as a sixth man because you come in as a sixth man, you provide that quick spark, and you just change the game more than you could have as if you were starter. You know. What? Well, where did he play college ball? I don't remember. He played Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. Right. 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 Almost went to Stonehill. I know he took a visit there. <laughs> Yeah, Dave would have liked that. I don't know. I don't know. He, he was absolute, absolute knockdown. All right, so let's jump into the the pro A season now, because you, as you're moving forward towards the playoffs and and yeah. uh, you know you guys are competing for a championship. Yeah. Um, so that the season was a grind, long, long season. The German league season is uh, the second longest season in the world, next to the NBA season. It's, it's very long. I mean, we we get there in in August. I think we're done early June, so it's it's a very long season. And how many games? How many games in that regular season? I'd like to say like thirty-five or forty. Remember, it's just one a week, so. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot, though. It is. So we're I mean we're we're cruising along. We are uh, we I mean, in in the pro A we, we we're playing this new stadium, the Rasta Dome. Uh, we've got like sold out crowds every single game. I mean, and they are rowdy. They, these are rowdy, rowdy crowds. <laughs> and, and then we, we get to the playoffs and I'm, I'm, I've been dealing all year. I had this, I had these weird injuries with, with uh, my tibia where like the muscle was pulling away from, from the bone. Like, and it was, it was super painful, but the, they always got me some great, some great treatment. They paid for whatever kind of treatment I needed. I mean, I was going to 20 different doctors at one point, like to try to get this thing figured out, but yeah. uh, it, it didn't really affect me too much that year. As far as like performance wise, I was still, still like able to perform at the top level, get to the playoffs. Um, we're top seed. Cause like I said, we just went on a run. Yeah. And then we get to the championship where this is move up. This is to get up to the top of the league. This is to get up to the Bundesliga. It's huge, huge deal. So we're playing, we're playing the championship. We're playing against uh, Ludwigsburg. They got uh, John Stockton's son on the team. Pretty good point guard. He's, he's pretty solid. Le lefty point guard. I think, uh, yeah, le lefty point guard. Um, very talented, tough, tough kid. You know, I don't think they were the second seed. I think they were maybe like fifth or sixth, but they were they were playing hot. You know, we get to game five, and we're playing at home. This is the, the it's a five game series, yeah. And we win the game by like twelve points. It was it was awesome. I think Corey had like seven threes, like in in like a ten minute span, and we won the game. The crowd's going wild. Uh, and we, there 
was a parade in the city. It was a day game, and there was a parade in the city. So after the game, like, you know, the, the, the team, like, had us all fitted for suits beforehand, beforehand, wow. before we even won. <laughs> and that's a lot of confidence right there. I like that. I like yeah. that. So we, we come out, we're on, we're on floats going through the city, like <laughs> literally floats. And there's tens of thousands of people in the city. Like it is a wild scene. I mean, craziest, coolest thing that's ever happened to me. And then it, it takes us to city hall. We go into city hall. We're like signing, signing so many autographs to city hall. Like everybody's chanting our names outside city hall around the balcony. It was just, it was such a cool experience to be able to do that, um, to be able do that for like the city that was awesome like i said like Is it how, how how rare is it to have a team, you know, make multiple jumps like that quickly? Like, is that something that very very rare? You know, so for so I'll tell you for me from going Regionalliga, Pro B, Pro A, Bundesliga, I don't think that's ever happened. And from going for Rasta, Pro B, Pro A, Bundesliga in successive years, I'm not sure that's ever happened. I mean, that's pretty, pretty impressive to be able to do as a, as a club, you know, yeah, to be able yeah. to put the right, right pieces together and to go from pro B to the pro A and then add the right pieces and not kind of ruin the team chemistry. It was, mm-hmm. they did a really good job with that. Are you, are you still, um, have you, have you hired an, another agent at this point? Or are you still representing yourself? Still represent myself on single year contract. I mean, I kind of just bet on myself at that point, right? Like, yeah. I, you, at a certain point, you got to kind of bet on yourself. I mean, negotiate my own contracts uh, and, did, and did the same going into the Bundesliga too. Yeah. Now, after, after the pro A season, the, the team president actually flew all the players out all the wives out to Barcelona for like a 10 day all expense paid vacation. We're like, we were going on yachts. He was shutting down restaurants for us. Like it was the, and, and we're coming off a champ, a championship. Like we, it was, it was an insane time. It was, it was really cool. Like to have all the guys together to celebrate in Barcelona. Like it was super, super cool. Yeah. That's special. So you guys know right right after that game that you're bumping up again, or is that decision not not yet? Made? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we we know we're moving up again. Yep. We know we're moving up again. Uh, that was that was always the goal, and immediately they they started reconstruction of the Rasta Dome to make it even bigger. Uh, I think at first it held like five thousand people, then it held ten thousand people. Like they just. They uh they immediately started that construction for the next season. That's cool. That's impressive. I mean, you talk about you know support for a team and an organization. <laughs> They were ready to go, man. They were ready to go. That that was their goal. It was like the owner. The ownership was like a bunch of friends um, from yeah. like childhood, and that was always their goal. Nice. So how uh how did how did that go? So you, you you end up you come home again after that season now. What was your what was your schedule like? Uh, we'll dive into that here just a little bit. Um, yeah, so I I come home around in early June. Uh, yeah, I'd I'd, have, I'd take maybe a couple weeks off. I'd still I'd still hit the gym, hit the weights. I'd yeah. take a couple weeks off of basketball, um, and then I I was living in in Belmar during the summer, Belmar, New Jersey during the summers. And I'd, I'd rent a house out with Julia. And I would, after those like few weeks, I'd start playing the Jersey Shore Summer League, the JSBL, great, great summer league. And I'd also be working out, like shooting, getting my shots up outside every day. 
because this the summer's so short. You only got two months, then I'm back. Yeah, you gotta take care of you. you gotta get yeah. healthy. Take care yeah, of you. you got and exactly. I mean, I had some like I said, I had those serious leg issues, mm-hmm. which really, really hindered me going into that next season in the Bundesliga. But so I needed to rest myself, but so it goes quick. It's two months, and then you're back out. And and yeah. you got you gotta say goodbye to all your loved ones. Um it's it's not easy. And Julia was gonna start physical therapy school. So she was there with me my third year in the pro A, which was great. Well, she was there that she was there yeah. that year in Pro A and then exactly. not, not your last year. Exactly, which is tough. I mean, yeah. think about that. Like it's really, really we were dating for maybe four four years, five years at that point. Yeah. And she had to start physical therapy school and I had to go back and handle business in the bonus league. Right. So it, it, it was, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's always the most difficult part of saying goodbye to all your friends, your family, loved ones. Like it's, it's really, that's, that's a really sad time. Like that August period, right? Like where you're finally getting used to seeing everybody and being with everybody. And then it's like, all right, everybody, like I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you. I'll see you in 10 months. You know, <laughs> yeah. how did that, was that still, now you're going to do that eventually. Are you starting to look around and be like, "Hey, wait a second! Like, do I need to be, you know, transitioning? Or how long am I going to do this? Like, what did you did you have any thoughts about like big picture? Or were you like, I'm going to go play as long as I can here? At that point, man, I was going to play as long as I could. I mean, the yeah. Bundesliga and all those other leagues they pay really, really well. Yeah. So yeah. in my mind, I was like, "All right, like, I could do this for." 10 years you know, yeah. at that point. Like I could, I could make a lot of money and just keep doing this. And that, that was my thought at the beginning of the season. You're home for the summer, you're home for a couple of months, and then you got to, you know, turn the engine back on when you get back over there. And what's that like from a, from an organization perspective uh, in terms of getting, getting you guys prepared and ready to, ready to go? Yeah. Uh, it's always tough trying to, trying to get back into it a little bit. Um, I mean, we'd be staying in good shape. You got to in the summer, but yep. it's a different, different ball game when you're there playing against, you know, the competition again. So when I got back for the Bundesliga, they, they flew us out, the whole team, immediately to Barcelona again. Um, that's where we held training camp. You thought you guys were a big party again? Or were you uh... <laughs> Man, I went into Barcelona like, oh, wow, this is going to be great. We're going to be partying again, going to clubs again. This is going to be awesome. Was not. <laughs> It was not. We uh, we were we were. It was super hot in Barcelona, and we were sweating, sweating our asses off in the in these hot gyms, like doing training camp. We were running on the beaches. It was it was a really rough training camp. I mean, I'll tell you what. We we ate really good. Yeah. The whole week we ate at like five star hotels. That was awesome. Um, but it was a rough training camp for that whatever whatever it was two weeks or so. But it got us back in shape. And it got us, like, you know, the new guys together a little bit. I said we didn't have great chemistry, but, you know, it got us yeah, at least yeah. well together to go, like, away together and do something like that. I mean, right. Speak, speaking of food, I mean, when we go to these uh, – to our away games, I mean, we'd be staying in top-notch hotels, eating top-notch food, like, all the time. It was that – Gary, that, that's one of the things I miss, is just eating top-notch food all the time. <laughs> Yeah, How, what, what's your what's your take on German food overall? I like it because I'm a I'm a meat and potato kind of guy. Yeah, it, it it's pretty tasty, man. It gets a bad rap, but it's it's pretty good, man. It's uh, I'll tell you, it's pretty good. Like I, I got I got no complaints on German food, and we we used to have a really good lunch spot. I mean, when, whenever we go out in the city, go eat like the the people who own the restaurants, they loved us. So like, you know, we we eat for free pretty much or if we went to clubs or bars we drank for free pretty much um and when i say pretty much like definitely uh but you know like look we, we we'd go and get some great lunches at this one spot man i'll yeah with willies oh yeah with willies willies cook some good food man <laughs> a good plug with willie willies was the plug i'll never forget we, we go to these parties every year like and it's a festival for the city and you go down and and it would just be a bunch of kale and then just a hundred sausages on the table. <laughs> this, this was the party. It's it's like a part it's it's a part of German culture. 
um, especially in the north. And it, I mean, it's it's cool to be like a part, like learn other people's culture like that. Yeah. No matter how strange it is. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And obviously yeah. not. I mean, had had you been had you been over there prior to going over to play? Have you had you been over to Germany at all? No. No. Never. What, what what's great about Germany is it's in the heart of everything. Like I was able to drive to all different countries. I was super close to Amsterdam. Could go to Amsterdam whenever. I drove to Prague. I used to drive to Paris, like just on my own. I, I mean, it, it's very, very central. Uh, and then we get into the season, right? And you know, we're playing in the Bundesliga again. Step up in competition. We get some new guys in the team. Yeah. Our chemistry wasn't great. We weren't really playing well, and uh, we I think we, we won our first game in the Bundesliga. We got off to a good start. Started rattling off some losses. Uh, I wasn't playing that well. Um, just we, things weren't going our way. Like certain bounces that we would normally get, we weren't. We just weren't getting. Like it was. Yeah. It just happened sometimes. I mean, yep. I I still think like we we were we weren't the most talented team in that league. Definitely not. But I'd say we we're probably in the middle middle of the road there. Yeah. But it was a rough season. I I dealt with some injuries throughout which made me start questioning, like, damn, I don't know if I don't know if my legs will ever be the same. Like, I don't know if I'll ever have that explosiveness anymore. Yeah. So that that probably midway through the season is when I started thinking, like, okay, I might start transitioning because I had to sit out some games. Um, man, I, I was going to I was going to horse doctors. I, I was going to like I was getting the craziest things done, man, to try to like fix my legs. And it just wasn't working. Yeah. So I had to like sit out some games to like let my legs rest for a couple games so that like inflammation was down. And it was, it was, it was a tough year for me personally because of that. Uh, and that's why I started transitioning. Hey, like, you know, maybe, maybe it's time. I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to keep going like this. I don't know if my legs will be able to keep going. So I might have to think about a different career. Um, but then I, I started, I was having some good games again, starting to get better a little bit. My mom came out to see me. My, my sister came out to see a game. And then uh, and it, was, it was a home game in front of, in front of Rost. And I went up, got a steal on the, on the sideline, um, went up for like a breakaway layup. The opposing point guard came and like just, just like tapped my legs a little bit, came down, like buckled my ankle on both sides and just completely tore it on both sides. Uh, was in like a wheelchair for a little bit. It was it was really really nasty, like nasty break. And that that's when it was sealed deal. Like okay, yeah. Because uh, I wouldn't be able to play for like over a year because of that injury. So yeah, there'd be no way at that point. I'm not going to sit out a year and then try to come back. Right. Uh, not under contract that next year. So that kind of sealed the deal for me. And uh, I mean, who knows? I might have finished. I might have just been done right now at that point. Yeah. But. It was. I, I don't want. I don't want to make it seem like that wasn't an awesome year too, because it was. And all all four years were really cool. And playing in the Bundesliga, the top league, against you're playing against guys that were playing North North Carolina, like Virginia, all these places. And Big time. It was, yeah, it was cool Big as time a environment. Player. Yeah. Oh, awesome environments, man. These arenas could hold thirty thousand people. Like for me to go in here and play against somebody from North Carolina and go whoop his ass coming from Stonehill, like. Nothing better than that, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. So looking at your your career overseas as a whole, progressing through the leagues, you know, just it's just a unique experience and playing at different levels over there against all kinds of competition and all different types of venues. Um, and you're fortunate, I mean, in in some sense to have, you know, with the success, um, you kind of avoided a lot of you know, negotiating different contracts with agents. And, you know, it sounds like you got to do a lot of that yourself, which ultimately gave you a little experience for what you're, what you're doing now, I'm sure. I mean, you're right. I've been fortunate. I've, I've, I've had some awesome experiences. I had four years and a crazy four year experience over there, like very successful and very different leagues, playing in different cities, uh, experience that I'll never forget people that I'll never forget people that I'll be friends with forever. Um, and these experiences are like unique and kind of rare, you know, not a lot of people get to have these experiences. Right. And then, you know, then I still had plenty of time to come back and 
mm. uh, t- take up another career, another career that required me to go to school for three more years. Never gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I was coming back after four years and I was just going to go start working for some company. Like I had to go back to school for three years, but, um, I don't know. I think it just, my, my dad always like my, my parents in general, it was like, they always like kind of pushed me to do what I wanted to do. Uh, and I think, I think it just comes down to betting on yourself, right? Like sometimes you just got to bet on yourself, man. Like going overseas for the first year, I just had to kind of bet on myself when I wanted to just negotiate my own contracts. I had to bet on myself. Like, I mean, you're a great example of that too. Like it's, it's just like, it's something, uh, yeah, I mean, I can remember. You got to take some risks in life. Yeah. I'm down in Philadelphia <laughs> after working, you know, in the environmental consulting industry for, for you know, four years after, after graduating from WPI. And I transitioned down to Philadelphia in the office down there. And at that point, you know, I was a little bit away from the game of basketball. And, and that was certainly, you know, difficult for me. But it's always something I, I, I wanted to get back into, but I just didn't know when the right time was. I think it was maybe that that next year yep. um, that I got the itch and I started I started making phone calls. And then luckily, Coach Caridio at Widener gave me a shot. And I don't even think he ever hired me. I think I just kept showing up. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I'm not surprised at that. Eventually, I just, uh, you know, I was part of the team, which is cool, but. Yeah, that's what I mean, man. You bet on yourself, dude. Like, you got you got to do it sometimes. You got to take these risks. I mean, you you had your degree from WPI and you had this career, and you know you decided to to change careers. I mean, it's never too late to do that. It's never too late to follow your dream and to change a career and just bet on yourself. Like that that, that, that that's how people make it. That's how people make it. People very rarely uh, do anything great by just being comfortable, right? taking the easy route. Yeah. It's a little different, you know, so, you know, path might be a little different, might be a little unique, but I think that's what makes it, that's what makes it special looking back, you know, Um, and you've got a great, great story to tell and some great experiences to, to have with you. Um, You know, and I'm jealous that you still live in Philadelphia because I, (laughs) I love that city. That's right, man. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. So, Hey, th- thanks for coming on today. This was great. I think, I think for, for you guys listening, I think this just gives you a great perspective of, you know, somebody who, who had a, a very successful career overseas and it's just something that you really only have one opportunity to do in your life. So, right. Right. All right, AJ. 